everyone welcome back to the channel today we're gonna do a Friday I think it's Friday who knows maybe it's not Friday <laughs> look, we're going to do a look book a book look we're gonna do a book look and today's book look is the fall cutting garden this is a Christie's Christy Rice um, watercoloring coloring book. So this book is made for you to get wet, to have some fun, to throw color around and to let it all go. I love it. So we're going to look here. I love this. Okay. So I'm going to read you a little bit of the forward. Okay. Christy Rice ushers us into the age of creativity in an era where those who slow down and take a moment to experience their surroundings discover how to release their brilliance. Once individuals find their creative spark, it sets in motion a series of events. Serendipity becomes the order of the day. Chance encounters with key connections and moments of elegance become second nature. Christie's work helps us find our inner stream of pure joy. The joy of creating that what mat the joy of creating art that matters. The joy of finding our voice through our brush strokes. The joy of taking a breath to feel at peace with who we are. Christie empowers us to pick up the brush and create joyfully. This is the essence of brilliance. And I love that. The joy of taking a breath to feel at peace. That's what we all need, right? We, <laughs> we all need that. So she has a letter from the artist here and in it there are a few suggestions. So light pressure is key. No need to press hard with your brush. When wet, the paper will warp a bit. This is normal and things will smooth out when dry. So if it warps a little when it's wet, don't panic. Keep moving around the page as you paint, avoiding the urge to overwork an area while wet. This can cause peeling. Color and water need to settle into the paper a bit before working more into the area. If you notice peeling, revisit the painting when the page is dry. Tear out each page to work on if you'd like or keep them in the book. Either way, you can flatten the ripple in the page by placing it under a heavy book for a while. So just a few keys there. So it kind of opens up. Sorry, am I, I don't think I can go out anymore. Let's see, wider? No, really? Okay. <laughs> So we are as wide as we can get at the moment. So we have the forward here. Look, at, it just keeps on opening. So I've got a four page kind of thing going on here. But if we come all the way to the beginning here, my goodness. Okay. All right there. It has like artist notes, watercolor 101, setting up your palette, use more water if your marks look scratchy. So it gives you use less water if the water puddles on the page. And then it says common struggles explained. My color isn't moving on the page. I can't get my color bright and bold enough. My washes look splotchy and overworked. And it gives you kind of an answer there. So if you've got some questions or you're struggling, we have that. Basic color theory and mixing. A dirty palette. I have seen very few palettes I would consider dirty and in need of cleaning. In fact, the dirty color that collects in the nooks and crannies of your palette can be used to add awesome details to a nearly finished painting. So that is something about watercolor artists that I've noticed that they just kind of leave their palettes really messy and that is something I have not come to terms with yet. So that is something that I need to pay attention to. Um, let's see, I know basic color theory, but if you don't, there are a little note there and there's plenty of YouTube videos and I do have some YouTube videos on the color wheel and color theory. So details galore, gives us some ideas of how to do lifting and splatter and flooding. 
So gives us some of those. And then we have a watercolor gradient chart. And you know, this just kind of shows you that the more water that you add, the lighter your color can get. And look at all those tones that you can get with one, one paint. So you don't need a lot of, okay, we can experiment and have fun. Okay, then we have like the actual coloring book in here. And then at the very last page of the pullout here, um, it says suggested materials. So, and it gives you like the best budget option. Um, gives you some of those. And then here's some inks that, uh, the inks come in a huge variety of colors and sparkle. Um, without glitter. So here's an idea for that if you want inks. Um, richly pigmented pencils. Here are some ideas for watercolor pencils. Here's some ideas for brushes if you don't know what kind of brushes. Um, a super affordable set with incredible saturated color. The Kuretake Tambi 36 color set. I think I have the 36 color set. We could pull that one out and play with it today. I do have some Daniel Smith though that I absolutely love, which she has actually down here. And then she has my favorite go-to colors when painting, which is fun to know like what, um, what, what other artists use. So that's fun. All right, so then we have our actual coloring book in here. So I'm gonna, oh, and look, we have more notes. Eh, that's nothing too interesting. So we're gonna flip through this from the back because I'm a weirdo. No, just because I like doing that, okay. So this is so cute. So this is her fall book. She has like a book for each season. And it is on like nice watercolor paper. You've got flowers and you have some scenery, lots of flowers. So we will, oh, there's some apples. That might be fun for fall. It is not yet fall or autumn here. It's about 90 degrees still during the day. But I'm hoping, oh, this is cute. Like just like little things that you could practice on. That's kind of fun. Ooh, this I like too. Just as you could do like a little piece. Oh, this is something a little different. I like that too. Fun leaves. So I picked the autumn book just because that's what we're kind of going into. Um, and that's probably my favorite. Uh, season for like colors and stuff. So this, it looks like it's showing you like a little snippet of each page and telling you a little bit about that page. And this is at the front of the book. So looks like the first page here. Let's make sure. Yeah, okay, so the first page is Dahlia's, and so it'll tell you a little bit why she why she drew Dahlia's. Every spring my thoughts turn to Dahlia's, waiting to see them sprout in late May brings out my impatient side because I know the glory to come. When it rains a lot, I got I get nervous thinking my precious Dahlia's won't thrive. These big beauties have me completely enchanted. And then she gives some painting tips. I often start painting flowers at the centers. A touch of yellow or pale green at the bloom's middle seem to give the whole page structure and inspires me to move on and begin to build details and depth. Starting with a random petal somehow always feels unfocused and doesn't give me a sense of where to paint next. So that's interesting. Might be a good way to, for us to start. And then she has like a little 
focusing on being an artist. Artists fight fear of failure. I say fight for good reason, because let's face it, we fear failure, but we can do better in the fight against our fears. Painting is just using up some paint and paper. Messing up or failing in a moment of creating is just a small waste of materials. Absolutely nothing else is at stake. I bet you feel better feel better, right? And I like that. That's fun cuz that's how I feel. Just do it. Throw it around. Like what what do you what do you have to lose by trying? So, I think we should try Painting something, but I like this book. This is way cute. I have to get her others. Oh, how much are these? I was gonna let you know what the price of these are. Hang on. They are a little pricey, but I think for watercolor paper and such a thick and so much, um, I think it's worth it, the price. Let me see. So I did get this off of Amazon. And it looks like they're in the $20 range. Yeah, so that's not, that's not too bad. I think for what you get, you know, because there is so much um, like to learn and to read and tips and then you get good paper so I think it's definitely worth that $20. I kind of want to do something like that that doesn't have like a ton of other stuff and then it, she says you can take it out. It doesn't look like they're perforated, but it looks like they're glued in, not sewn in. So they are, yeah, easily removed. So that is nice. So you could take it out and tape it down to a board. So let me get some paints ready and we will take, we'll just paint a little bit in here, see how it goes and yeah, so I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, let me tell you what I have sitting here and then we'll kind of zoom in on the paper. Um, these are the Kiritake 36 that, that they were talking about in the book. So we have those sitting here. They're good, I like them. They've got lots of pretty colors and you get lots of paint. And then these are my Daniel Smiths that I have. I absolutely love them. So I activated them as well, and I need to collect more Daniel Smith colors because they're just amazing. And then um, I have some water here. Look at how dirty and gross that is. It's clean, you guys. It's been through the dishwasher. <laughs> And then we have our paper. And then I grabbed a few watercolor brushes. Um, these are my favorite. They are the silver black velvet. And I say they're my favorite, but I am not a watercolorist. This is a Grumbacher and I also like it. I have, this one's an eight. This one's an eight and this one is a four. I'm not a watercolor artist, but those I seem to do the best with. Okay, let's zoom in here and just see what we can do on this paper. Just try it out because we're taking a look at this book. Okay, so I'm going to get some water on my number four brush here and I like how she was saying to like put some color in the middle. So I've kind of taken some yellow. I don't have names out for these you guys, so it doesn't matter. This is not a copy and <laughs> I, yeah, 
You guys are gonna do whatever you want in your book. So I'm taking some of like a yellow ochre and I'm adding a little bit of some green into it. And then I'm going to go ahead and like put it in the center of a flower. Maybe down around the, kind of like that. Yeah, okay. That's nice, I like that, okay. It's nice to do something that's looser. I've been way too uptight and stressed lately. It's just really nice to have a nice little relaxing moment here. Okay, and I keep just kind of mixing in more green because that's what's on my palette. So some of these are gonna get a little bit greener and it just, I don't, who cares? It doesn't matter. We could put some more yellow back into it. But. Yeah, I'm liking this. How fun. Okay, then we'll get, um, I don't know, I kind of want that to dry before we like touch it again. So maybe we'll go and color some leaves. So let's grab like this olive green color in the Gamzy. I think the Gamzy need to be activated quite a bit. Like I always feel like it needs quite a bit of water to get it going. But once you get it going, it's, it's great. Okay. So like here's a... All right, and then I think I'm going to add a little more of the olive into there, make it a little bit darker. We could even like put in some brown or some orange or something to make it a little more. Okay, I don't, I don't smell it anymore. <laughs> Makes you nervous. All of a sudden you're like, wait, something burning. Okay, so let's grab, I like that. It has like a little more of a yellow color to it, but I, like, I think watercolor is more difficult for me because it is looser. Because it does have, <laughs> I'm more um, naturally more, I'm uptight you guys. <laughs> I'm trying to find a nice way to say it. I'm uptight. I get stressed. I think things should be perfect naturally. And I, so I'm always trying to find ways to like loosen up, relax, step outside of that and be okay with something that looks looser and enjoy that aspect. And this is a good way to do that. This is fun. By adding more water, you'll get like lighter paint. So by adding more paint, you can darken it back up. Maybe we'll mix whatever that is on our palette into it. I'm just kind of mixing whatever is there to kind of dull it out a little bit. It's starting to get a little bright, so. Okay, how are these centers doing? They feel nice and dry. So let's add a little more yellow to them, shall we? Just for fun. Let's see. This yellow is my Daniel Smith yellow. What is it? Let me see. So this is Indian Yellow, Indian Yellow by Daniel Smith. I kind of want it, you know what, let's put <clears throat> some water on the paper. Let's try this. I don't do it very often. Let's actually just put some water on the paper. Okay, kind of let that Soak in for a second. And then we'll take the yellow, Indian yellow, kind of drop it in. We'll kind of let it mix however it wants to. That'll be fun. And then we'll let it dry.
My goodness, it's looking so cute already. I'm in love. Oh, it looks like I missed a leaf. Let me, I don't know if you guys can see that leaf or not, but I'm going to grab it real quick before my green all dries. We need to decide what color we want these flowers. Mm, I love all the green and yellow on here. I'm kind of thinking some orange. Kind of put this in the center a little bit and I'm just kind of flicking it out. I don't know. But I'm not a watercolor artist. This is just for fun. See, look, I got yellow bleeding into it because I'm too impatient to let it dry all the way. And I'm too lazy to go out and get my heat gun. I need to get another heat gun so that I have one inside and one outside with my encaustics. That's what I really need to do, is buy another heat gun. You guys can't even see that one. It's way down here at the bottom. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then let's grab kind of the last of the color that we have on here. And we'll kind of, this has more yellow in it this time. I just kind of like that we're getting some variation on the same kind of color. Some are more yellowy, some have more of the red. Okay, then let's do, <clears throat> so now we just kind of need to pull the color to the edges, right? So what if I just get water? Let's see if I can use like just water to kind of Blend it out to the edge. Oh yeah, that works. I do kind of see and feel the paper warping just a little bit, but nothing major. It's really quite nice. Okay, this page is pretty wet right now. Um, I'm going to let it sit here and dry while I go do some other things I need to do today. And then I'll be back and I just wanna put some finishing little things on it. So we'll leave it here for a minute. Okay, I want this a pretty dry, I think, cause I want to put in like these little dots. Well, I think this book is a hit. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun in it and just like loosening up and relaxing and not having it be something that is <clears throat> stressful or needs to be perfect. Just let loose and really, and practice the watercolors too. Like I can practice without feeling like um, it needs to be perfect. Which I think that's one thing that I struggle with watercolors is that I'm like, it's so messy. It looks so messy, but really it's supposed to look loose and maybe a little messy. So I like this book a lot and I like this paper. It's nice to work with. And I've enjoyed having this look at this book with you guys. I hope you have an awesome week, weekend, that you find time to relax, take some deep breaths. As heaven knows, I'm going to, I'm gonna spend some time. It's a long weekend. It's gonna be a Labor Day and uh, my husband's actually off, which is <laughs> something that doesn't usually happen. So I'm going to take full advantage and relax. I don't know. Take a bubble bath. Maybe I'll put some wax earplugs in while I do so that I can't hear anything and really relax. Okay, you guys, I love it. 
I think it's fun and cute and darling. I hope you have an awesome week and weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Do something fun. Do something to relax. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.